first thing that we are going to start with tonight for creating your image of the point, I think a great name for this painting would maybe be a dusky evening at the Hanover. You can see out here as you look at the point, um, it's actually a really simple composition. You have your horizon line, you have this like beautiful bend of the river that Hanover is so famous for. And then we have some trees up here in the front. So we have the very far background, which is basically just a line. We have our middle ground, which is this S curve of the river. And then we have our foreground, which are these trees that are much closer to us. Since we're out here in real life doing life painting, um, things are going to change. You can even see from um, that sketch what the point looked like an hour and a half ago looks very different from what we have now. We have the clouds moving in, the lighting's completely different. So it's about kind of getting that image in your mind. Does that make sense to everyone? I'm going to have my phone on me to be able to check the chat as well. So that way, if you guys have questions, I will be in the chat here and I'll be able to monitor those along with Nicole. So if you guys wanna take a few minutes and go ahead and get your sketch out, it does not have to be um, perfect in any way. Beautiful. The other thing that I want to admit to all of you is it is very windy out here right now. I know that we have some Madison locals that are here, so I'm sure that they're aware of that as well. Um, so it's a little sketchy out here tonight. So if my canvas blows off of the easel, you guys have to promise that you won't laugh at me too much. Can I get a thumbs up if you guys are ready to move on to the next phase of painting? Or a thumbs down if you're like, no way, I need another minute to sketch. <laughs> Patricia, rude. Okay, well, I am not seeing any thumbs down so far. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and we will move on to the next part of the project. So the next thing that I'm going to have you guys do is I'm going to have you pick from the two greens that you were given in the pack. I think everyone got the, got the same or very similar packs of supplies. Um, I'm gonna have you pick one of these two greens that you would like hmm, that you would like to use for the background. So for me, when I'm looking at the point right now, I'm seeing mostly greens. There are some burnt oranges and things. It's like you know the very beginning of fall happening. So I'm gonna start by doing that green. I would tell you guys um, that sticking with the lighter green is probably the best choice because um, it can be difficult in painting to go. Um, over dark colors with lighter colors, even though you can do that. Um, but it's gonna be easier if you take the, if you start with the lighter green and then work darks into it, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna start. Yeah, the one that I picked is the Viridian. I'm sure that there's some of you out there that are better painters than I am, that it's like, sir, Viridian is not technically a green. Um, but for now, I'm going to ignore all of you naysayers. So I'm just gonna like squeeze glob of it in there. Um, and then I'm going to say that you can grab whatever brush you like 
um, whatever you're interested in here. I think I'm gonna obviously pick the biggest one because there's a pretty like large field that I'm gonna pop this green into. So again, this is not about like painting a perfect picture of the point. It's about having fun and thinking about like how you think of the point. Now, the other thing that you're gonna notice and the thing that I'm noticing right away is that this brush is really stiff, which has given me some really cool textures. So play around with that, get a, get a feel for it. How are you guys feeling about being muted? I mean, I would rather have all of you be able to talk. I know that Zoom is not necessarily like the best place for those for that kind of thing. Um, but that would be that would be what I would want. Would you guys be able to still focus even if there's a lot of background noise and maybe sounds from other people? What's the what's the feeling on that? Let us know in the chat. I'm gonna need more green paint. <laughs> All right, well, it sounds like you guys wanna, um, at least the, the people that felt strongly enough to speak up um, would like to keep me as the primary speaker. So as much as I would like to pass off some of the conversation on to some of the rest of you, um, I've been outvoted. So we'll stick with me just talking and then you can probably also hear me uh, obnoxiously breathing. You guys are just lucky that um, doing it this way, I don't have to have a mask on because then you would never be able to hear a word that I said. Um, I guess while we are applying these fields of green uh, with more or less grace and rapidly losing daylight, um, I will tell you guys um, kind of the story of my first trip to Hanover. So when I was in fourth grade um, for spring break, my mom and my two grandmas decided that they should do something to give us us meaning my brother, my sister and I, um, a chance to really see the world. And to my mom and my grandmas, um, the world really seemed like a two hour trip to Hanover, Indiana, um, because there is a, there's really no way to show the world to like a, a 10 year old, a nine year old and a seven year old um, over the course of a four day spring break. So. We came to Madison and we spent the day um, going around the city of Hanover and the city of Hanover, <laughs> the town of Hanover and the city of Madison, kind of exploring what we had to see. We got to see of Hanover that my mom bought me at the CVS in Hanover when we got here because I just begged her to be able to take pictures of all the cool rocks. Um, because I am from a, a very flat part of Indiana um, where there are no rocks. It is very swampy there. Um, so I was just absolutely mesmerized by the river, the drive down into Hanover, the drive down into Madison from Hanover. Um, so I was really mesmerized with that. Um, Anyway, it, I guess it was a great trip. I really don't remember that much about it as a fourth grader. Um, but I got, after I took the PSAT, I got in the mail a letter from Hanover. And I thought, wow, that place sounds interesting, but I don't think that I could afford a private school. 
but my mom really talked me into it. And so we came down here and as we were driving over here, of course, this was, you know, eight, nine years later from this trip that I made in fourth grade with my mom and my two grandmas, and my siblings. And I was like, why does this feel so familiar? So I took it to mean the Hanover College was where I was meant to be, was that this place felt very familiar, like deep down in my core. I was like, man, I know this place. I understand this place. I really want to be here. And so, you know, all the things that like happened your senior year of high school ensued and I graduated and I came to Hanover. And when I came home for fall break, uh, halfway through my first semester here at Hanover, uh, my mom had all of these great pictures to show me of this trip that we took to Madison when I was in fourth grade. And I was like, wow, I didn't even remember that. I didn't even remember that we went to Madison. And so the whole time, my thought about how Hanover was the place where my soul belonged, that there was, this was like the equivalent of like a soulmate college. Uh, it was actually just that I had been here in fourth grade with my family. So, I mean, it turned out to be a good decision anyway, but I always like to think of that story. If you ever have a really strong gut feeling, make sure you ask your mom about that gut feeling if, uh, if you can, because she might tell you that it, it's not deja vu. Uh, like you're just literally remembering something. So I don't know where you guys are with your painting right now, uh, but mine kind of looks like this, which to me, this looks more like Loch Ness than uh, the point at Hanover College. Um, looks more like a lake than a river, but we'll get there. It's not about uh, where we are right now. It's about where we're going to go. So if you guys have not already, and I know that this wasn't included in the supplies that you were requested to bring, um, you will probably want a cup of water and a rag or a paper towel because um, you may want to keep using this brush. It might be your favorite brush by the time that this is over. Um, so I'm going to take this brush and I'm just going to put it here in the water. I'm going to give it a little rinse. I'm going to grab my rag uh, because I plan on using it again because the next thing that I think that I would like to paint is the sky. Now we're not going to get like really fancy here or anything, um, but the sky is looking really pretty and like pinkish orange right now. So I think that I'm going to grab, um, I'm going to start with crimson and then I'm going to work my way through um, these reds and oranges kind of as we go down to give it like a sun, a sunset looking effect. Um, we'll see how it works out. Um, I have watched on YouTube a lot over the last few days, other people trying to do this. So hopefully I can emulate some of the YouTube artists that I've seen this week. I apologize for the crickets in the background. They are very noisy. I can't mute them, unfortunately. That seems like a terrible place to put that. All right, so this is the color I'm going with next, is this uh, dark crimson color. You don't have to choose this. If you would rather your sunset be um, purpley, um, it might be great to start with a dark blue, like the ultramarine at the top. Uh, the idea here is basically that we're just gonna work from a darker to a lighter color, blending the two of the, like blending them together as we go down. So we're gonna start with the darker color at the very top of the canvas, and we're down to a lighter color down here by the trees. So you can start with crimson or vermilion, um, pick your poison there. And once again, I'm just gonna grab a big glob of it and I'm just gonna pop it right there in this little square paint palette. I'm a bit hesitant to call it a paint palette since it's not like round. It doesn't look like something that Salvador Dali would have used. So I'm hesitant to call it that. So as I'm applying this, you might notice that um, I'm not doing an excellent job, but I am going around the corners and the edges of the canvas because that helps the canvas to look more finished. Now, if you're using the same brush that you did before, and if your brushes are similar to mine, which I think they should be, you might notice that since this brush is so stiff and it's giving us those, these great textures, as you're dragging it across the canvas here, you are gonna get, um, as it runs out of paint, it's obviously going to leave these lighter areas um, where it's like less opaque than it is in other areas. So if you want to, you can kind of use the density of color to create um, textures in your sky. 
Um, Cause it's, you know, it's a bit windy out here. So I'm going to try to, in a very Van Gogh style, uh, I'm going to try to like add some movement in the sky just by using the, the texture that the brush gives me. Nothing more than that. And then I'm not really worried about like preserving my clouds exactly as they are. Um, we'll work on those a little more later, but they'll be all right. Making sure I kind of try to get the edges of the canvas so that my painting actually looks finished because I don't know about you guys, but framing is one of my least favorite things to do, especially with canvases like this. Um, so I'm probably not going to frame this guy. I'm just going to hang it raw on the wall. I think it's going to be a lot more fun. I'm also noting, noticing that I was probably um, a little bit ambitious with our time limit here. Um, so we're going to, we're going to keep going until the piece is like semi finished. But if you have things that you have to do, like if you have to go to bed or take a shower um, or other reasons that you need to hop off at eight o'clock, um, you are more than welcome to do that. Um, the way that I would view this being a positive person is that you're getting more than you paid for. So even better. I hope that that didn't sound as like uh, rude as I thought it did. So the next thing I'm gonna go to, I think I'm gonna do burnt sienna next. It seems like a really pretty color. It's a, not quite as dark as that like crimson that we just did, uh, but I think it'll look, I think it'll look nice and hopefully make our painting look a little less crimson-y. See, now that I like squeeze it out though, I'm like, I don't know about you. So I'm gonna go over here to like the side of that painting we were talking about, oh no, no. That stuff is brown. I'm not using that. I changed my mind. It's another great way to use the edge of your canvas. This is a testing site. Or if you have like a piece of paper handy, you can use that. That's great. So let's instead think about this vermilion. Okay, that's pretty. I like the vermilion. We'll do some of that. And you know what? I think I'm going to get really spicy here. and I'm going to throw some uh, titanium white on there. I'm going to lighten that guy up because that red up there at the top is really, really dark and the green lower down is not quite as dark. And so I am kind of worried that they're not going to look super balanced. Might throw some of that red in there too. Got some red left over. Oh yeah, so good. See, that's a lot more kind of like the color of the sky right now. Let's grab some more of that red, some more of that like weird color that I just mixed. This is definitely a painting that my mom would not keep on the fridge for very long. What was that timer? Oh, you guys, it's time for Nicole to take her trash out. Hanover employees are people too. We have to take our trash out. So I guess um, since you guys were, since I was outvoted and you guys decided that um, letting other people talk was not your favorite idea, I guess I'll just continue to talk about myself. Um, so when I was at Hanover as a student, um, like I said before, I was an art major. Um, I never, I'm sure you can all tell looking at this painting, I never actually took a painting class when I was a student, um, but I was very interested in um, more graphic design kind of things. Um, so I spent a lot more time on that. Um, Nicole, if you wanna get in there and show them um, how horrendous that painting is. Um, again, guys, it's not about the way that the painting looks right now. It's about um, how it looks when it comes together. So as Nicole is showing you um, the painting, which is really, truly very abstract right now, I'm squeezing some white paint onto there, or excuse me, yellow paint. And then I'm gonna grab some white paint too and pop it in there because I think that's gonna work really well into the existing colors that we have there. You can really choose whatever you want, especially if you decided to start with that ultramarine and work down into uh, lighter blues or into purples or something like that. A brush is way too wet because I didn't dry it off. I don't know if 
y'all notice that, that that was a bad choice. But anyway, in addition to not taking a painting class when I was a student at Hanover, I did, however, um, take basic design, which kind of gives you an overview of color theory and how um, how colors work, how they interact with one another. Um, and it also helped me to integrate those things into how I see the world and how I look at other people's art, which is sometimes I think more important than creating your own um, than creating your own pieces is seeing how other people make their pieces and like being able to understand like the work and the processes behind it. Now look at that, that green paint wasn't quite dry, which I'm sure the rest of you will run into also. Now, if you guys um, are watching, which I wouldn't blame me if you've decided not to by now, um, but if you guys are watching, I'm kind of like trying a new technique to, um, to create new textures and create depth. Um, this is actually something that I saw Bob Ross do once. That he was just like, just get in there and kind of like stab at it. Um, and those textures that you create will help give it um, more of that cloudy evening look. And again, I'm trying to be respectful of everybody's time. So we are gonna kind of fly through this piece a little bit. Get those good ASMR sounds. That is looking very sunsetty to me right now. I don't know about you guys, but that is starting to really give me some like nice Indiana sunset vibes. Very, very, um, it's, it's got that, that look, that quality of light to an extent. So I'm feeling pretty happy about that. I mean, I'm not gonna tell you that it's like the best thing that I've ever painted, but I am feeling pretty confident in how that looks. So the next thing that I would like to jump to, and this time I'm gonna to remember to grab my rag. And you guys don't have to continue using the exact same paintbrush like I'm doing. Um, I just have a tendency to do this, like to get where I really like the texture that a certain paintbrush or that a certain tool is giving me. Um, you don't have to do that. Um, if you want to try a different brush, if you want to grab a different one, maybe that first one that you grabbed is not your favorite. Um, that's totally fine. You're not beholden to any of these brushes. Um, I will tell you right now that the brush that I have been using is a number 12 brush. If you have the same kit as me, um, it's pretty flat and broad. It's got a great texture. Um, and these brushes are, I believe, like some kind of a synthetic material. So they're not like real hair or anything like that. So they're not going to give you like very, very fine lines or anything like that. So if that's what you're looking for, don't hold yourself to too high a standard. Okay. So at this point, I'm going to try to move um, into doing the river a little bit so that I can at least feel like I'm at the halfway point on this piece. Um, so the color that I'm gonna start for with the river is this cobalt color. Um, we will try to add, if we have enough time, some additional colors kind of like reflecting the sunset that we've, um, created so far. Uh, we'll try to add that into the river as well just to make it look like it's reflecting the sky. It's becoming a beautiful evening instead of a beautiful day at Hanover. What do you think? Hmm, I don't think I'm going to throw a little bit of white in there. I don't, I think that that looks a little dark for me. I'm going to run out of white paint. What do you guys think? I keep throwing it on. I guess we'll see later because again, the idea is to try to start light 
and then move into more darks. Because like I said before, it's a lot easier to make your painting darker than it is to make it lighter, especially when you're working as fast as we are and the paint is not really getting a chance to, to dry super well. It makes it super difficult to um, make your painting light again. That's kind of like cutting hair. Um, it's really hard to put hair back on. So same thought. You guys are lucky that I didn't just like scream directly into the, to the Zoom because there was a student walking across back there um, and he really surprised me. Now I'm trying to use um, long strokes in the river because the river is, that's kind of how it feels like that it is to me, that it's um, made up of like longer, longer pieces versus the sky, which is more like foggy. Oh, Nicole, look, we show them this beautiful barge. That is so cute. Can you guys hear it? It's so loud. It always surprises me how loud they are. So um, on Father's Day, uh, my family and I, I see a little white spot. Uh, my family and I um, were able to take um, one of the Rock and, Rock and Thunder riverboat cruises um, in Madison. Um, they're really fun. I highly recommend it if you get to go. Um, but I actually, the gentleman who was the captain of our boat, um, he was informing um, my parents and I and the other two people on this boat that normally seats 14 people um, about um, the barges and the drivers. Um, so they are a month on and a month off. So that person that is working down there um, works for, it's still time for Nicole to take her trash out, guys. Um, so the, the people that are down there working on that barge, they work for a month and then they're off for a month and they are expected to work, um, they're only given eight hours of the day to sleep. So I think that, like I mentioned earlier, I'm an art major, but I think that's uh, 16 hours, right? Um, so they work for 16 hours straight and then they have to sleep solid for eight hours. Um, and they have to get back up and work again. So that is just something else. All right. So now is the time where I think that I'm gonna get into the clouds a little bit. Um, I'm gonna grab some of this titanium white that I've been using for everything else. I'm not gonna be very sparing with it or anything. And then I've got lots of this um, light blue left over. So I'm gonna grab just a touch of it and I'm gonna dab into the paint like so. I'm gonna come up here to these clouds. I'm just gonna give it some little fluffy treatment. Now that looks like a cloud, doesn't it? Now I really feel like Bob Ross. And here, as we're working on these clouds, the wetness of the reds and the yellows behind it is actually kind of a boon to us because it helps us blend the clouds into the rest of the sky behind it. Did you feel that? I do believe it's starting to rain a little bit. I wonder how that'll affect the piece. What do you guys think? I ask as if you can answer me. Ha ha ha.
Great. Do we have sound back, you guys? I think that's a yes. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate you responding. Are you guys still able to see okay? I want to check the chat just to, just to see how that looks. Yes, okay, great. Thank you, Micah, for participating. So as you guys can see, we're at a good, I would say, three quarter point on the painting. We have about 15 minutes left. So we're actually running closer to the time that I wanted than I thought we would be. Um, so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start working on some darks. So there was another uh, really beautiful green that uh, came with the set. This is um, called Hooker's Green. Um, I won't make any of the jokes that I was thought of because this is mixed company, um, but it's a nice dark green and we're going to use it to start adding texture into the trees um, and actually give that thing some depth so that it starts looking more like the point and less like the lake. And I am, um, as I'm doing this, I'm going to squeeze just a little bit of that other green that we used over here just to make it a little bit less dark and to help with blending. You guys were about to let me forget to wipe. I don't know why I did that. I just wiped it off and then dipped it back in the water. You guys are making me nervous. Okay. So here you can see I have my, my two colors. I'm just gonna Kind of smoosh them together. I'm not going to mix them like really, really well, but I'm just going to smoosh them a little bit so that I can start using that to add texture. Now this, the point is really looking very different than it looked when I was here earlier today. So I'm really kind of going off that image that was in my mind's eye. So as you can see, that is a lot darker than what we were using earlier. And really that is what, um, honestly, what makes a painting good, for lack of a better word, um, is contrast. So you may not think about it so directly, um, but if a painting is lacking in contrast, it's probably not gonna seem very visually interesting to you. Um, you're probably not going to love the painting and you may not really understand why. Um, it might be hard to to describe like what it is that you don't like about the painting in front of you, but normally it's going to be because there is a lack of contrast. Um, because contrast is actually a big component of how we see. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen um, those. I'm trying to think of like what they're those like optical illusions where they ask you like, is the dot in this painting the same color as the dot in the other painting? Um, and they're of course surrounded by completely different colors. And of course you think like, no, they're not the same color. That's a completely different colored, completely different colored dot. Like there's no way. And then they take away the colors surrounding it. And you're like, oh, both of those dots are pink. I thought that one was orange because it was next to green. Well, that is exactly what does it work when you're painting. You have to consider the colors that are adjacent to the color that you're using because it changes the whole mood and the whole feel of the painting. Now, I don't expect you guys to be like master artists or anything by the end of this. Um, first of all, you need to be taught by a master artist to become a master artist. And uh, that did not happen tonight. hope that when you look at paintings, if this is the first time that you've ever painted something, um, that the next time that you go to a museum or you go to a gallery or you even um, just go to a coffee shop with um, a local person's paintings in it, that you can appreciate more what it takes to create a good, a good painting and really what it means to create something like that. 
because I know that I after not after tonight I'm gonna have a lot more respect for people that teach uh, paint and sips as all right so we've kind of added some depth here another tip that I'll give you guys is if you get the chance and especially I know I saw some of you earlier are like sitting on the ground um, if you get the chance get up and walk away from your painting look at it from two feet away from three feet away from five feet away um, and it might actually make you feel a lot better about how your painting looks um, because you stop noticing all of those little details that really bother you um, those little things that you see as inaccuracies they kind of fade away the farther that you are um, and most of the time you are never going to be as close to a painting as you are while you're painting it i don't know if you've ever been to a museum but most of the time they don't want you to get this close to a painting. They want you to be much farther away. Getting any fun comments in the, in the chat, Nicole? Oh yeah, Nicole's checking the We are definitely getting some drops of rain, you guys. That's kind of cool. I've never painted in the rain before. Um, but if you were trying to make a hooker's green so you didn't get that dark green, um, I would tell you if you have a dark blue, something like a, yes, this color, um, something like ultramarine if it's in there or anything that's a dark blue or in the family of navy, um, if you take that, and then you combine it with um, a yellow, uh, maybe lemon yellow would be good. It'll give you something similar. Um, you will probably want to have three parts of the dark blue to one part of that light yellow. It doesn't have to be exactly what I'm using. Um, I know it's probably been a long time since you've mixed paints. I know that it was for me um, before um, I started my art career here. Hanover. Um, so that can be really difficult for sure. But green and the basic way you make green is just with yellow and blue. Um, I would advise you against um, just trying to put black in there to darken it up. You can try that. Um, but oftentimes black will, it, it kind of eats up the tone quality. It makes the, it makes the green not only darker, but also less vibrant. Um, but if you can't avoid it, that's okay. I mean, we're not going to have these paintings shown in the Met. I don't think that any of us are going to have an art critic tell us um, how awful our paintings are unless um, Patricia wants to offer some input. Um, but I do think that you will be able to make something that's close enough. Um, let me check the chat again. Okay. And you guys can, can hear me okay? The sound is back on. Yes. Great. All right. So right now I'm just continuing to add some texture here in this um, foreground area. Again, I'm not being super detailed. I'm not worried about capturing every leaf on these trees. What I am trying to do is just make it look like the, the trees have some depth and they're not completely flat, which again, we do through use of contrast. And for those of you at home that have both hands free, I would tell you that it's a great, a great time to remember to paint your edges, like I was saying before. And that includes the bottom of your painting. I'm not gonna pick up the painting and paint the bottom right now because I think that that's gonna be really cumbersome, but don't forget about that bottom edge of the painting. You can also wait until after the paint is more dry to do that.
I can hear my art professor telling me right now how disappointing this painting is and just how uh, and just how much more it needs before it's ready to go. Okay. So I'm gonna tell you that I'm not like completely satisfied with these trees, but something that I would tell you is that you should always try to find something in just in life in general, but especially in a painting that you really love about it. Um, I am really in love with this specific cloud. I think that this cloud came out awesome. I love him, he's my favorite. Um, and then I also really like this moment right here. Like, I think that's looking really good. So I have a couple of little things to celebrate in this painting, which, you know, I will take that, especially painting in the dark in the semi-rain. So that's pretty awesome. Okay. So once again, I'm cleaning off this brush. I bet all these other brushes feel really ignored. Maybe I should switch to a different one. I think I'm going to grab a different one just for fun. Hmm. This puffy one looks fun. Let's see. So for those of you that have the same kit at me, the, as me, this is brush number six. So I'm gonna grab this guy and I'm gonna try to work him in. So what I'm gonna try to do now is I'm gonna work, uh, I'm gonna try to work some of that texture into the river. Now, um, Nicole, if you wanna show them the river, it is like pitch black out here. So I am using pure imagination. Actually, I wish that I had started working on the painting this way because then it would be really easy because I would mostly just see like black and purple <laughs> and I could just paint black and purple with some like orange stripes. That would have been a lot easier and a lot moodier too, but here we are with the sunset painting without a sunset. So, all right. So earlier I used vermilion, vermilion and white. So I'm gonna put that back in the same little pocket. I think that was the wrong pocket, but you know what? Beggars can't be choosers. There's some of that white. All right, and I'm gonna give those, like I did before, a very rough mix. I'm not trying to make those things perfect. And then this is really gonna freak you guys out. So I've done my rough mix. And I still have some of that blue left over from earlier. That's the same blue that I used to paint it. And I'm just gonna like touch my brush in there. Now there's a strong chance that this could end up brown, but I think if I do it like just right, oh yeah, it's gonna come out like that. So I'm gonna touch in my loosely mixed orange and white. I'm gonna touch in that loosely mixed blue and white from earlier. I'm just gonna spread it out on that painting. It also helps that our painting has not completely dried. So it's giving us some great little moments here. Like I said earlier, I really feel like this is long strokes. It really does look like it has a little of the sunset on there. That is just too freaking cute. That went a lot better than I expected. I really like this part where it's got that like white streak. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna try to get some more of that white on my brush. Let's see if I can do that again somewhere. Oh yeah, white, white, white. Let's take it back to five o'clock. Beautiful. That turned out a lot better than I thought. And it really does look like it's kind of reflecting the sunset a little bit. Again, nothing you're gonna see in the Met, but it is, it is turning out pretty well. Okay, so I'm gonna take a pause for a minute. Um, what we are going to do now, so we are basically at time. Um, I would say that this painting, we are probably at 85 to 90% finished. Um, I wanna go through with some highlights and some like actual real dark so that we can really heighten that contrast and kind of push this painting over the top, make it look really good. Um, however, I don't think that we're gonna be able to achieve that in like the three minutes or something that we have left. So if you need to go, please feel free to hop off. For everybody else, let's take a five minute break and then I will meet you guys back here at, um, let's say like, 8.05, let's just meet back here at 8.05. Um, I ask that you don't leave the Zoom meeting, just turn off your video if you know how, um, or if you want to. Um, 
and then I will be back in five minutes. I need to get a drink of water and some other things. And then we'll keep, so if that helps anyone make their decision. Um, is everybody all right with that? You're, um, let me know in the chat if you're like, no, I hate this idea, this is terrible. Thank you, Amber. All right, well, I will see you guys back here at 8.05, okay? Like I said, don't leave the Zoom. Um, just get up, walk around, take a bathroom break, get a drink, whatever you need. Fill up your wine glasses for Pete's sakes. Um, I'll see you back in just a minute. Oh yeah, I think Jan has a great suggestion. Um, we can let you guys unmute and actually chat with each other if you want. Um, so I'm gonna slide over here and we're going to unmute yourselves now if you want to. All right, I'll be back in five. You know, right? <laughs> gonna make us all show our paintings at the end. Oh hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Mine looks like an anvil and the a blue anvil in the middle of trees. <laughs> Mine looks like a medical illustration. I think Bob Ross was better at this than me. <laughs> Bob Ross wouldn't find a happy little anything in my painting. <laughs> This great vision. We have a, a friend whose son is a, a new student at Hanover. He's a transfer student. And we had thought, well, we'll give her our painting, what, whichever one is. There are two of us here for okay. Christmas. And I don't think so. <laughs> Nobody wants this in their house. <laughs> These make nice but it was fun. Well, they can't be that badly. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, mean, I looked at Sarah's picture and I mean the trees look like trees. I looked at my picture and the trees look like was in it, and it, it um, oh the the one yeah. in madison some came right. some came right somewhat and i didn't know that so i'm looking at it in all the downtown scenes i'm thinking gee that looks a lot like madison and then of course there's one scene i think they did in the cabin which was gone by the time i was there well maybe it's still there but it was closed when i was there but you know they're standing on the point and i thought I think that's the point. <laughs> they they did a whole scene in Classics Hall. Yep. Oh, they and, did? Yep. There, there's another movie called Madison, which is about the boat race, um, which is a wonderful, wonderful feel-good movie. We all need that right now. Yeah, it's, it's like Hoosiers, only it's wet. <laughs> Now that I live in Michigan, I try to explain to folks that Hoosiers was actually required viewing when I was in school. And they're just like, what are you doing, Indiana? And I'm like, the, the, we play baseball. We don't we play basketball. Like, basketball, excuse me. Yeah. I, I student taught during the basketball tournament at Jeffersonville. And that was the best thing ever because I had like a whole week off out of six weeks yeah. of student teaching. I missed a whole week. Um. Wow. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Hello. I hope that you guys had a good break, filled up your drinks. Do we want to? I really want to try letting people talk. Um, 
but I think that Nicole will mute us all if it gets if it gets too bad. Okay, so um, we've been sounds good. Yeah. What was that? We've been having a nice chat. Oh, that's great. I mean, that was kind of my feeling about it is that I didn't want to uh, like put the kibosh on everybody having a good time, right? Um, and we managed to secure some lighting in the form of a Honda Civic. So um, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we can uh, keep this up for a little bit longer. Plus, I think I'll feel a lot less like I'm just rambling at no one um, if I can get a little bit of response, even if it's just like crinkling noises or the occasional sneeze. So I think now I know that I've been um, talking real smack about this painting so far, but now that we have like some of this uh, lovely lighting on it, I actually think it's looking a lot better than I thought. Um, I think that um, like all things, if you're surrounded by darkness, it really just makes the whole thing seem, <laughs> seem a lot worse. So I'm, I'm actually uh, pretty happy with it right now. Um, we will see if I continue to feel that way, but that's okay. That's, um, I think that working on an art piece is a lot like a relationship. Um, you have your moments where you're really, really in love with it. You have your moments where you want to throw it in the trash and that's okay. Um, and just like any other relationship, you can always work on it. So I think that, I think that I am ready to hop back in. So I know before we left, I'm sure that this is the backlighting here is probably awful. Um, but before we left, I had talked about how I wanted to add some darks. So this is this one is called Lamp Black. Feel free to use whatever flat black that you have that came with your set. So I'm gonna pop this and my last clean little, little bubble right there. And I'm gonna grab the smallest oh. brush that I have. So goodbye to oh, my man. two favorite brushes. Um, I really like um, I've been eyeing it all night. Um, this little flat short brush. Um, if you have the same kit, kit as me, it's number two, but it's really small and flat. So I'm going to grab that guy. I'm just going to dab him here in this paint. Now, a lot of these, you may have noticed as you were using them, actually, um, a lot of these brushes are glued um, when they're shipped. And what that does is it protects the tips from being like mashed and crunched during shipping. Um, but they can actually be a huge pain in the butt the first time you use it. So don't be afraid to like take your brush and like scrunch, scrunch, scrunch it until it feels like it's actually like the flexibility that you need. So I'm going to take my little brush here and I'm going to look at some of the areas where I feel like I need some contrast. And so now before the point was absolutely pitch black like it is right now, this would also be a very easy painting. Black wash, a couple of white spots for the beautiful lights um, out here in the distance. Um, but we're still sticking with our sunset painting. So before it got dark, it seemed like this part of the painting was really, really dark. So I'm gonna take this little black brush and I'm gonna come in here. Now, when I was squanch, squanch, squanching him, I got all the paint off of it. So I'm gonna come back in here and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try to match the texture that I had before. Now I'm trying really hard not to get too bad into this light area because that is where I am really getting that like excellent sense of contrast, right? Like the difference between this light part and now this true black that I've slapped on there is really what's giving us the feeling of depth, like of this whole thing receding back into darkness. I'm gonna grab a little right here too, cause I think that that will look fun. And if you still have any of your green from before that's kind of wet and you're afraid that the black, like I just applied that black on there and I was like, ooh, that's so black. Um, I can grab some of that green from before and since that is still wet, I can kind of try to mix the two of them together and make them play a little bit nicer. I'm gonna grab a little bit more of that green. He'll help me out. Oh yeah, look at those textures. I don't necessarily love this moment, but I'm loving that texture. I think I can make myself love it by trying to incorporate it a little bit more so that it doesn't look so, uh, I don't know what the word is, unique. Unique, but in a bad way. <laughs> 
I'm sure that some of you have been called unique, but in a bad way in your life. Okay, so I think I joined you like an hour too late. <laughs> yeah, I admitted somebody from the waiting room when we first popped on. You're really lucky that we're going over time. Um, uh, uh, we will be I happy, said it started at seven. It, I was wrong, huh? Are you in a different time zone? May, yeah, well, I'm in Chicago. Yep, that's what it is. You are here right on time for Chicago. However, for Madison, Indiana, you're an hour late, but we won't hold it at Hold it against you. <laughs> it doesn't by painting. <laughs> no, it probably doesn't. But you know, um, like I said, we'd be if you want to stay, we would love to have you for the for the next half hour or so. Um, if you want to hop off and just have us send you the recording, that's fine as well. Um, it's totally up to you. Um, you're not gonna hurt my feelings either way. So <laughs> Well, since I'm a blank screen and I'm a whore, I don't even know how to paint. I think I will wait and have you send me a recording if you wouldn't mind. Okay. Well, we will, um, Nicole or myself, one of the two of us will be in touch with you tomorrow. Um, since this paint and sip sold out so quickly, we are planning an additional one for later in the year. So we'll be in touch with you specifically about that just because um, we didn't give you the FYI that it was Eastern time. Okay. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Well, thanks for hopping on. I'm sorry that you weren't able to enjoy it as much as you had hoped, but. So bombed. That would have been fun. Yeah, I think that we all kind of need this distraction today. Yeah. After, <laughs> yeah. After just like the last six months or so, let alone the last 24 hours. So. Yeah. That's for sure. Okay. Well, thanks so much for joining us, Will, and hopefully we'll see you at the next one. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Have a great night. Thank you. You too. That's a bummer. Everything else now. I hear you, Patricia. What's going on? Uh, so I did the sky only with like five colors and like horizontal brush strokes, but then everything else I did like that choppy brush stroke, and now I'm just kind of like, hmm, I don't know how I feel about the sky. <laughs> Yeah, I, um, I have definitely had those moments before. I know that um, you have been there for them. For those of you that don't, uh, that don't know, which I assume is probably all of you, except for maybe one or two other people, um, Patricia and I were contemporaries here at Hanover. So she was an art minor and I was an art major. So we spent a lot of time together. Um, since she was an art history major and I was an art history minor, it seemed like we were always with each other um here's just better i moved my sky horizon line there you here. go see that's what those uh that's what the darks are really good for huh. is they can help you fix some yeah. of those things that you hated earlier on Now, the other thing that you got to be careful of, though, and this is this for me is always my biggest problem, whether it's um, a print or a painting or an illustration or just whatever, is that my tendency is, is that I just want to paint everything black. I just want to like really get in there with those darks. Um, that's not always the best thing with, for your painting. You have to remember to actually listen to and look at the painting. This might be a great time for me to do that thing that I talked about earlier which is to step back, step away, look at it from a distance. So it's like a completely different painting from back here. I'm about 10 feet away. I'm socially distant from my painting. Um, and that really makes me see it in a completely different way. So I'm gonna come back in here and it's showing me from stepping away from it for a second and looking at it, it's showing me a couple of places where I should really focus on like highlighting those contrasts. And I need to stop over here because I'm going to make this into a black mess if I'm not careful and just like make it not even look like trees, make it look like a big pile of dirt. You always overwork the darks. <laughs> I know this is the, this is the critique you guys. This is the critique. <laughs> um, this is, this is what I told you earlier is that um, none of us were going to have an art critic look at our paintings. Little did you know there was an art critic in your midst. <laughs> Yep. Let's paint. Let's paint. 
Patricia, you're not being paid tonight to critique these people's paintings, so maybe keep it on the low, specifically for me. I don't get paid to critique people's work anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Someone who expresses my opinions on things, typically. <laughs> <laughs> not to mention that Sarah and I like lived together for four years, and at one point we shared an art studio space. <laughs> yeah. That's those, um, that's a great example of, and I hear this so much. I don't think I explained this um, at the beginning. Um, I now work for Hanover College. I am assistant director of annual giving and stewardship. So when you get those letters in the mail that are asking you to support your alma mater, please think of me before you decide to, um, before you decide what you do with it. Um, Cause I probably wrote that and sent it to you. Um, but anyway, uh, I can't remember where I was really going with that story. Um, but the idea, I think, I don't know if this is where I was going when I first started, but for me, um, even though I do not do art full time anymore, and even though I was an art major at Hanover, um, Hanover gave me like the foundation I needed to be able to go anywhere and do anything and figure out what my, uh, what my strengths were and how I could utilize those. Um, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I do have some level of the gift of gab. Um, so Hanover really helped teach me that. Um, and Hanover, Hanover just made me realize that it's more about the relationships you make than what your individual skills are. <laughs> oh well this is a we have another alum oh you guys goodness. yeah we are doing a virtual um paint and sip so we have we sure are <laughs> you're all right that's the beauty of Hanover I guess <laughs> uh yeah at this point <laughs> uh it's it's seven o'clock oh look a dog serendipitous moment Ooh, um, i'm gonna use that as an excuse that i'm drawing on memory <laughs> have a good evening. thank you sir have a great night that's gonna be my excuse i'm drawing on memory yeah exactly he made a he made a very good point it made me feel a lot better i was like oh yeah i am just kind of like guessing at this point guessing at this point but on <laughs> <laughs> okay so heating a point <laughs> <laughs> heeding patricia's warning from earlier i'm going to kind of try to step off the darks as far as the uh the trees go now since i have applied so much of this dark to these trees um i am going to work on trying to incorporate some darks into the river just because right now it's um it's really not jiving with those dark trees so i still have plenty of that wet blue blue paint and i still have plenty of this wet black so I'm going to do what I have been doing. I'm just going to kind of like try to wipe the green off here. I'm really not worried about it for some reason. Um, I think it's dark enough that I think it'll read as black regardless. And also it's a river. It's made of water. It reflects um, the things that are around it. So if there's a little bit of green in it, I think that that will turn out. So I'm going to grab some of that blue. I'm going to just dab it into black. Not too much. Just like we did earlier. I'm especially going to come like, uh, I'm really worried about all the paint on that brush. Mm. I guess we'll just see how it goes. Nope, I hate that. Oh well. <laughs> See you guys, what did I tell you? It's about just trying it out, experimenting. You don't have to love every single thing you do to the painting. Okay, so what we're going to do to try to rescue that is I'm going to grab a lot more of that blue. I'm going to come right back in there. Mine looks a lot more like Colorado than Hanover. <laughs> You know what? You can take inspiration from anywhere. <laughs> I hear another barge down there. It's so cool how there's just like these like cool, like beautiful orange lights down there and like a lot of noise, but no real but like barge. Someone <laughs> said that they were pretty happy with theirs. I want to see what theirs looks like. <laughs> yeah. I think at this point, I am doing what we call an art, uh, killing the painting. Um, so I'm going to let it rest for a little bit. And let's, I think that Jan has an excellent point. Let's stop and take a look at everybody else's paintings. Does everybody 
<laughs> Everybody down for that? <laughs> now you are on you are on Zoom, so not I can't make not necessarily you. everybody's, but but somebody had showed theirs because they were proud of it. Mine not so much. Mine looks like it still looks like an anvil in the middle of trees. Why don't you guys why don't you guys show me? I want to see these paintings. I haven't done my sky. I like how Michelle is also outside in the dark. Uh, she's, she totally gets what's going on. Oh my gosh. How do you, how do you say your name? Is it Janaba? Janaba? Wow. Janaba. Oh my gosh. Wow. That one's good. Oh, absolutely. Do you want to teach the next one? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm good. Thanks. Here, if you guys want to, um, if you guys want to all hold them up, we're gonna Ooh, we're gonna good. take a screenshot. Um, hey Nicole, how do I take a screenshot on your computer? <laughs> <laughs> Here, I I'll let you guys know when to take them down. You're gonna get your arm workout in, also, okay? How do you how do you see everybody else's? So, um, are you on an iPad or a computer? No, I'm on my phone. Oh, okay. So you're on your phone. So if you're on your phone, um, you'll iPhone. actually. Yep, you'll actually um, pick the phone oh, up and awesome. then you will, um, you'll swipe. So you'll just swipe along it and it will show you other screens. Did that help? Okay, all right guys, I am actually getting ready to take the screenshot right now. So hold up your, hold up your images. I'm gonna count, um, I'm gonna count down from five, hold up the images, I'm gonna take the screenshot. Five, four, Three, two, one. Beautiful. Oh my gosh. Thank you, you guys. That looks so great. I can't believe that I helped you guys make these paintings. Oh my gosh, Michelle, yours is so good. Patricia and Hannah, I didn't see yours. Hannah, show me your painting. <laughs> Come Come on. On. Look yeah. at that reticence. <laughs> and oh, I look so nice. oh, Hannah. Oh, I like how I'm like literally falling off the cliff into the river. That one's really good. I love your perspective. It's like the world's curved. It's kind of like when people take a pano. <laughs> Patricia, bring it closer to the camera. I can't see that thing. Wait, retake the picture. <gasps> That's <I'm> so <laughs> good. You know what? If you guys are really proud of these, um, you can take photos of them and send them to alumni at Hanover.edu and we'll collect them all. I think that would be really fun. Wait, can you retake the picture and I'll hold it? Oh my up. gosh. Jan, that's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, studs? Susan, Jeff? So I, I put mine up. Jeff's going to do his. Jeff? Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah, that, <laughs> I've already got it framed and <laughs> oh. oh my god. Yeah. This is... You know, a lot of these are much better than my painting turned out. So that makes me feel like I was a better instructor. Yeah, oh hey. I like it. I love the texture of your trees. Yeah. I'm into it. Yeah. I kind of move the I didn't have, have enough room up there. I moved the horizon line for the sky up way too high. You know, I had sometimes too much it's the, about the river. I mean, we love the river, right? The sky, meh. <laughs> I have to, I'm gonna have to watch the recording to finish the sky for mine. <laughs> <Here's your face. laughs> um, I, I, Did anybody? Screenshot where-, where Listen, there. I should have been very suspicious of especially Terry Hubbard with a name like that. Um, I would have su suspected some really beautiful paintings. <laughs> I don't know if she's listening, if she hears me harassing her. Yeah, there's Susan's. Beautiful. Good. It's so funny how you guys are sitting right next to each other and made completely different paintings. I mean, I guess we're all like virtually right next to each other, but still. 
Well, you guys, I know that we have gone a half an hour over. I really appreciate your time tonight, especially since this is um, the first virtual event of its kind that we have done at Hanover. Um, something that's like really interactive and live like this. So I really appreciate your patience. I learned a lot tonight um, about um, technical things and like what we need to do before we do other interactive Zooms like this. Um, and I, I think that I have really enjoyed seeing your paintings. I think that might have been my favorite part. Um, uh, Michelle, rolling your eyes at me. Uh, <laughs> um, but no, I had a really good time with you guys. Um, thank you so much. I hope that this, um, I hope that you enjoyed spending some time with other Hanover alums and looking at the beautiful point, the not point. this painting, but the actual yeah. point that's back there. Um, <laughs> It wasn't so thank you guys so much for coming tonight. Thank you for everything you do for Hanover students. If you didn't know um, your registration tonight, a portion of that counted as a gift and that went to support the Impact Hanover Fund, um, which covers um, just general needs around campus. Everything from toilet paper to fixing the roof to paying salaries if we have to. So thank you so much um, for supporting Hanover College and Hanover students. Thank you. Thank, thank you for leading us. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, guys. Have a great night. Good night, you as well. Good, night. Good luck getting off the point. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's, it was great. Thank you.